Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on Leapfrog Fight TV and we have another five one and a half minute rounds of C-Class Muay Thai rules in the 73 kilogram division. So let's welcome into the white corner. He fights out of the search gym in Bulma. Please give a warm welcome to Ben Wynn. Him this evening in the black corner. He fights out of the Warriors gym in Kent. Please welcome Josh Russell. So Dan, we have Search versus Warriors once more and their first contest, which was back to this evening, very, very close affair, went actually to a split decision. So these two gyms, they're back at it again. Yep, definitely. It's Search and Warriors head to head. And, um, oh, they come out. Let, let, let's call the uh, banner we're seeing here now. It says RIP. To did Williams. Rest in peace to whoever the Warriors Jim are bringing out on the flag there. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have five one and a half minute rounds of C-class Muay Thai rules in the 73 kilogram division. So once again, let's welcome into the white corner from the search gym. It's Ben Wynn. And facing him this evening in the black corner from the Warriors gym, it's Josh Ronson. Your referee in charge of the action, Mr. Chris Bashador. So Dan, once again, in terms of the weight, 73K, We've got a real difference in body shape here. Yep, number 10 in the ring here, right? <laughs> number one, big and tall, slim. Number zero, number 10, but listen, smaller, stockier, wider. And it brings two different attributes to the All ring, doesn't it? And zero doesn't <laughs> mean nothing. Well, that means it can be zero to hero in no time. That's right, Dan. It's all how you use those attributes. That said, a snapping right open kick from Ben there. Right the Furious start. Well, the, the funny thing is, you know, you know, we mentioned all the different aspects of Muay Thai and the different ranges. It was actually Ben that initiated that opening clinch. He's not saying, look at my how tall I am. I'll, um, I'll box you and, and kick you at range. He immediately pulled Josh in to have a look at the clinch. Yeah, and um, Grant still, he got low, didn't he, and spoiled it for him. Look, he's doing it again. He's got the underhook almost, and he just gets his head down low and bullies him a little bit. You need to do that with the taller fighters, don't you? That's right, he has to, and he has to maximise every opportunity. Off balance so in there. So we've got a great start from these two camps again, and look at him working the body there as Ben looked to create the space to throw the knee as he it's was textbook the space. number 10 fighting, as I say. Textbook. The shorter, stockier guy hammers the body and gets under those long shots. And now suddenly the teeth comes in from Ben to keep the range. I think he's realised he's got to fight on the look to take the leg. Great knee. He took too many steps forward when he had him caught there. And then he wore a big, big knee as punishment for that as well. Off balance now. I tell you what, Grun still is up in his product, isn't he? Well, the thing is, it's... It's just like, as I said, the first bout between the two gyms, so exciting, so early, and throwing up so many questions in terms of how they approach this bout and how you approach people of a different gym. And as you said, I think in this one, after that initial kick I saw from Ben, I thought, wow, and then the clinch, Josh adapted pretty quickly for me. He did, yeah. You know, it, it was a game of two halves, wasn't it? Came out really well whipped from the search gym. And he... Uh, he showed us he went straight into the action and was willing to clinch being taller. He went low, didn't he, and just spoiled him in there. As soon as there was a bit of space between them, Grunsel hit him with bad intentions. And I think he took and that first round. right at the end of the round after that, Ben suddenly started pushing out a long tee. Yeah, let's get rid of this guy. I don't want you now, I don't want you in my vicinity. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to have to put more emphasis on getting rid of him, I tell you, because the more he grows in confidence, Grunstall, and the more he sees his shots are working, he's going to come forward with more momentum.
And that momentum already starting to grow. I mean, if I was Ben, I wouldn't cut that range down willingly. That's it, get the long knee and keep that range. He's got something coming forward, hasn't he? Spoil him. Grunstel hasn't taken a step backwards since the bout began. No. Well, oh, now he's got, a good, he's got a good clinch on him there. Whips. He needed to drive that knee up the centre. Can't knee to the head, of course, under C-class Muay Thai rules. Only into the body. But just for the first 30 seconds to minute, I would not step in the way that Ben does with that rear leg. Use the God-given attributes you've been given. Um, use that lead leg, use the jab, because at the moment he's allowing Josh to step in. His left thigh is already marked up from the way he's allowed Josh to get to work. And again, he almost took the right, right, right coming hook. in. Massive right hook, Malcolm. Really big shot there. Look, puts his hip through it, goes low as he throws it as well. Oh, he's hurt him again. We the knew that was a big shot. The right was on the wall, Dan. The right was on the wall. Ben actually closed the gap for Josh. That right hand you mentioned before was a warning sign. Ben came in to mix it with him. And that's why I was saying to you, when we realize how dangerous Josh is, use the attribute, stay at range instead. He invites Josh to come in. That second right was so dangerous and, and it dropped his man. Yeah, there's a power difference between these guys. When this guy sits on his punch and puts his hip through it, yeah, like, like I often say, there's Anvil in the glove. Uh, there was so much talk in that in that second right hand and the thing was i've just been saying to you it, just from my personal perspective i'd be looking at seeing how do you keep at the end of my range how do you feel at the end of my jab here comes a long lead leg roundhouse instead ben steps in starts to mix it yep. gets clipped steps in again and the second one was a beauty he gets clipped here look he's already been clipped on the top of the head well i've noticed that yep it's a big it's a massive shot a huge right hand but Ben Whips in the corner, they need to know this guy, Grunstel, is coming in very square. They're both orthodox fighters. Where is Whips' his push kick? He can, needs to cheap and get rid of this guy. He's set up, he's coming in very square. So he's got a lot of open body. He can lift that left leg up and just push kick quickly and get rid of him. But he's not. He's letting him get close and he's letting him hurt him. Exactly, Dan. That's the thing. And this is why I said it's, it's one thing having the attributes. It's another thing using them. That lead leg for me is the answer to start, especially as he's trying to get his head clear again. Yeah, he's standing, he's standing in um, look at Chris now. Look, look at Chris Patchell yeah. looking. Oh, he got out of trouble there, but he cannot run for long because I'll tell you what, this guy is looking strong and his balance is unreal, look. Do you know what, that's the other thing that Ben's got problems with. Because of that balance, these are powerful shots right above us. He's a heavy hitter, this kid. He really is. And the blood on the nose tells the story. That was sickening to the body. We heard <laughs> yeah. that as well as felt it. Chris Patrick is looking for something to come back oh, from Ben. Oh, he comes up. He's hit the head, but his head was very low. It's coming down. You're right. Oh, it's the body shot. Forget the head down. This Those one's shots over. To the body. This one's over. This boy hits extremely hard. There's Anvil in the gloves. If he beats this count, it's only going one way. I'm telling you that now. Chris is giving him every chance, and you've got to rate Chris tonight already. Yep, giving the referee. boxes every chance. Oh, that's it. You're that's right, it. it's over. Simply put, destroy the body. Dan, that was beautiful brutality. This and what I boy mean by is that powerful. Is it was brutal, but the technique was so clean yep. and hurtful. As you said, his balance. Those clean shots. shots, Malcolm. You put it so well. They're clean shots. Look he at plants this, his feet. Look, gets a solid. You, know, you need the head there. You can't do that in C class Muay Thai. But his head was very low. Watch these shots. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. No, thank you. It's tight. It's short, Dan. It's hard. It's hurtful. It's horrible. Yeah. Tall and slim. You don't want them right on your floating ribs. Look, Look at that. The wind's Round gone. the elbow behind the guard. That's accuracy. To, to his defence. After those body shots, there wouldn't have been a lot in there. He'd have had to have beat the count with his heart, not with his body. He, could, he wouldn't have been breathing well from that. He would have just got up with his heart to carry on and carry on and put the fight to him. But this guy plants his feet and wallops you all around the ring, doesn't he? Dan, how many fighters have told you, and you've been there yourself, everybody, you know, the head shots, the knockouts, but everybody will tell you it's the body shots that sicken you. It's the body shot stoppages that live with you. Yep. They're the ones you even go home from sparring with and go, ouch, fair play to you, sir. You know. Lots of fighting determination on display, ladies and gentlemen. A huge round of applause for both of these warriors. Come on. 
And it's the Warriors fighter that is glorious today. Uh, this contest was brought to a close by TKO. One minute and 12 seconds into round number three. Let's hear it for your winner in the black corner, George Brunsell. Very tough kid. And once again, they've got the flag and banner over in the corner. So let's say rest in peace, Did Williams, who they've uh, come out with today. And I tell you what, sometimes when someone passes in your family or friends and they're close to you, it can break you or it can drive you. And he looked like he came out of a statement of intent oh, for his friends was, there, didn't he? Right. That was motivation, Dan. But as I said, it's, you can see many brutal fighters. You can see many people with hard hitting, as you said, anvil in their gloves. But when that anvil is combined with crisp technique, it's the most awful combination. Yeah. He's got a good school there, Warriors Gym, down there in Kent. They've always produced tidy fighters with all the right tools to come into the trade. But when you can bring a bit of power and a bit of heart to the uh, table as well, it's never going to end well for your opponents, is it? Chris was saying, just like you, that he brought his head down into that knee. But that is scary. When, when the two come together, Dan, it's absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. We said it early. Could have got rid of this guy quite a lot with push kicks. Bided himself a little bit of time, but there was a power difference, wasn't there? There was, and noticeable. And we've seen, you can see many guys w with raw power that will throw a punch unconvincingly, but just the sheer strength gets them through. When you've got a dig and you know how to maximise that dig, which we try to teach to all students, you try to get them to all get their body in it, to use the torque, to come from the ground up, to get the spring into it. When you've got that as well, yeah. that's the result. Yeah, you almost cringe when they plant their feet, don't you? It's the way he went behind the elbow. Well, we finished with the C class and, uh, Muay Thai. We're now going into uh, what I love is Pro Am Muay Thai, which will mean four Muay Thai rules, uh, two minute rounds.